All right, welcome back to Player Spotlight, everybody. Today, we've got Sino, the jungler for Obey Alliance, joining us. Sino, thanks for thanks for taking some time. Uh, apologies for, for everyone watching, by the way, if Bobby's uh, talking up a storm. That's kind of what Inbound does in the background there, so that's just kind of what we're going to have to deal with. But Sino, usually what we do in these in these player spotlights is just kind of just get to know you a little bit better, more so off the, the battleground of the gods, more so than on. Uh, from, from knowing you a little bit and talking to you throughout the years, I know that, that you grew up in, in Colorado, but talk to me about what, uh, what your living situation was like growing up. Did you, did you stay in Colorado your whole life so far? Yeah, I was born and raised in Colorado. I was there my entire life until I moved here for SBL. Uh, I love Colorado, honestly. I think it's a great place to live, and uh, I already miss it. I've been here for like three weeks. I already miss it, so... The, that that fresh mountain air, you know, that's uh, that's kind of what you're used to yeah. by now. So they have the, what, it has near the best Denver? Air. Uh, yeah, south of Denver. Okay, but like fairly close, like an hour away from Denver. So cool. And I know you're you, you've been a big uh, a big sports guy. You and I talk about sports an awful lot. What what were, what were your favorite sports growing up? Talk to me about some of your favorite uh, Colorado Rockies. You know, your Todd Heltons, your Troy Tulowitzkis, those, those type of guys. Yeah, growing up, I played baseball the most, personally. I think I watched baseball the most as well. Like, my family's a huge, like, baseball family. My brother played baseball. I played baseball. My sister played softball. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I watched the Rockies a lot growing up. Like, the 2007 run, where they made the World Series. Yep. Some of my best, like, sports memories. But, like, Troy Tulitsky, I think, has been my favorite um, Rocky of all time, personally. Right now, it's probably yeah, Trevor Story. But, okay. yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, used, I watch more in Nuggets now compared to the Rockies, though. Well, that's fair. The Nuggets are kind of popping off. The Rockies uh, a, a little bit less so these days. What position did you play when you played baseball? I played catcher and I played right field mostly. Okay. All right. What was uh, what was like? What were you bringing to the table? You know, were you the defensive specialist? Were you uh, were you the get on base type of guy? Like, talk to me about your baseball play style. Yeah. Um. Okay, I was not a great baseball player by any means, right? <laughs> like, but no, nah, I was pretty good defensively. I got on base. I did everything you could ask for, you know. That was weird. Like, you were you were a multi-tool kind of guy, you know. You kind of did it all. I'm yeah, you know, jack of all trades. Right, right, right. Those are valuable on the baseball field for sure. And now uh, we're in the middle of a, of a big playoff run for the Nuggets. So I know you've been rooting for them and Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic, of course. How about uh, how about the Broncos, man? Any any love for the Broncos? Um, I mean, I like them, obviously. Just last few years have not been great, but things are starting to look up, you know. Drew Locke might be the GOAT. Uh, they have a good defense. Their offense is looking good, but I'll, I'll watch them a lot this year. We'll see how they do. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So let's, uh, I do want to talk at least a little bit about Smite. Uh, what, what got you started playing in Smite? Because you've been playing for a long time. Uh, I was actually, I used to play CSGO a lot, and then I was on Twitch one day, and I just saw Smite ad. And at, during the time, I was, like, a really big fan of, like, mythology. Mm. Um, so I saw, like, Zeus and stuff, and it got me interested, so I just started playing off that, like, ad, basically. What uh, what time period was that? Was it, like, closed beta? Or do you remember, like, who the newest gods were at that time? Yeah, I, I started playing near the, I, I think Nim was the release when I started playing. Yeah, I, okay. I remember I got to like level 28 when closed beta ended, and I was actually really mad because I wanted the Ymir skin. And I was two levels off. I was I so mad, but yeah, Dude, around that time. Should have been spending so much time playing baseball outside, man. You got you to gotta stick uh, to the that's grind. That's what I was saying. I missed a skin. Like That's messed up. Well, hopefully now, I mean, you're a world champ. You should be able to get some pull around here. We can we can probably hook it up at some point yeah. for that awesome one since that. you were so close. You know, since you were so close. What uh. What what were your first like favorite gods? What what kind of roles did you enjoy playing? Did you always like being a jungler? I know jungle was was very different back then. Um, I actually didn't play jungle at all when I first started playing. I was mainly a mid laner. I would just play Hades mid almost every single game when I first started, and I would just build like the rings, like Vitalis, and I don't know why. Like I was so bad, but that's what I liked doing. That's what I did back in the day. And then I also played ADC a decent amount, but I I did not. I hated jungling when I first started playing. What uh what has changed for you since then? Because Hades still the play, but but now at least it's in the jungle. What made you want to go over to the jungle? Uh, my junglers were useless, pretty much. You know, I had to take it into my own hands, you know? Mm, you just have to smart. do that sometimes. And as I'm sure you understood back then and now, every game is jungle diff, one way or the other, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. It was jungle diff, so I am figured, if there's going to be jungle diff, it might as well be in my favor, you know? 
Very, very smart. You you clearly do love to, to keep playing those weird picks, though. It isn't just back in the day with the Hades rings. I mean, you're playing Hades jungle now. You played Chernabog jungle in the SPL. Why do you think that that you are so willing to, to pull out those sorts of weird gods when others aren't? I just think there's uh, so much potential in this game to do stuff like that. Like, especially because people are just not used to playing it. Like, when was the last time people played against Hades, like, regularly? I think... I just think, like, for example, in Hades, like, people are so bad at, like, beating Hades, too. Stuff like that. So, I just think there's a lot of potential to play those characters and do weird strats, and it could be super successful. Obviously, sometimes you play Chalk, you get 2-0'd, but I did Whoa. win a couple Chernobog games, though, so. Listen, there will be no Chalk Jungle slander around here. I'm converted. I'm, I'm on the board the Chalk Jungle train. Uh, do not apologize for that one, ever. The Chernobog, I guess it did win, so you can't argue with that one too much. Uh, what was your first start for sort of start into competitive? Like, how did you get into your first competitive scene? Um, well, back in the day, I used to play ranked a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I used to yeah, play with CV. Fun. I don't know if people remember him, but uh, we were Me quite too. the duo in ranked. Um, I think I was number four GM at the time, and he was number mm -hmm. six or something. So we were starting to get a little known. Uh, off that, I got onto a Challenger Cup team. Which we did, we did like pretty good, and we we went to finals a couple weeks, but uh, I wasn't really like super into it. And then I actually got an offer to play on Xbox in season three, and uh, it was just an opportunity to make like some money and play competitive. So I decided to do that. Uh, that went pretty well, but yeah, that was basically how it started. Who was on that first Challenger Cup team? Was that uh, would that have been like Squirtle Squad? Uh, yeah, that was Squirtle Squad. So it was me, Keeg's mate. Um, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. Uh, Turtle Man was on that team. Uzzy was on that team. Oh, that's right. And support was... I don't remember who support was, but... Mm. Uh, we, I remember we lost to... During one of the relegations, we made it to semifinals, and we lost to the Lasses Team Flex team with, like, Oceans and, and yep. Gone. And that was the highest, like, I got, like, the closest I got to SPL before uh, Season 4. Interesting. I thought you had been playing competitive longer than that whenever you came over to Xbox, because I, I was playing on Xbox at the time, and, and, and you were definitely a name that I had recognized, but maybe it was just from ranked. You, you had only played what, like... That would have been one or two splits of, of Challenger Cup before coming over to the box? Yeah, it was mainly season three was when I started playing competitive, I really. Like I think in season two, I did a couple like Friday Night Smite stuff, but Super like purple. actually on a team was season three on those teams. And then I went to Xbox. That's a roll. So talk to me about the Xbox days, man, because because those were they were a little bit wild. You know, it, it was kind of it was kind of open. No one really knew what they were doing at the time. But uh, I know I had a lot of fun. What, what were your impressions of, of your days on the Xbox competitive scene? Um, thinking back on it now, I, I was, it was honestly just like a great time, right? Like I had a lot of fun. Um, we won a lot, obviously, which helped a lot besides worlds, but, um, I don't know. I just had a great time. It was just like a cool experience to be able to like play competitive with the team. And I just think it helped me a lot. Just learning how to play in like a team environment and stuff. I loved playing on Xbox though. It was a good time, man. And I don't know about you, but I feel like mechanically, it made me better on PC because I realized that everything was just easier that way. Like, why yeah. don't I just hit this stuff? If I could hit it on a controller, I could definitely be hitting it on a mouse. No, yeah, I agree. I think when I came back to PC I after I played Xbox, I, it felt like I was, like, so much better. Um, I never really thought of, like, specifically why, but that's probably why, right? Like, if I can hit stuff on Xbox, like, obviously you can hit stuff on PC. It's like the the training ground, you know. It's like the 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 oh, what's that Dragon Ball Z reference? I don't know. I'm losing it, but uh, yeah, someone yeah. will know. What I know what you mean there. Yeah, 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 thank you. The, you know what I mean. Those so those days happened. You know, you you have some success on Xbox. Then you got an offer to join. Was that trifecta pretty early, if I remember correctly, or did you go back to Challenger Cup before making it to the SPL? Um. Yeah, well, like originally, I decided I wanted to play back on PC. I joined a Challenger Cup team. It was getting pretty close to the start of the split, actually. I, like, uh, that open tournament for relegations or whatever was in, like, a week or something. And then I get a message from Walrus, who was forming a team with Yannick, Kerwin, Snoopy, and... Uh, Yannick, Kerwin, uh, and the, yeah, then Walrus. And he's like, yo, you want to try out for this team? And I was, like, pretty... Because it was, like, it was like a week away from the... I was, like, super surprised, but obviously I said yes. Mm -hmm. And then I tried out for that team... 
I personally didn't think I played that well in those tryouts. I didn't think I was going to get the spot, but they ended up choosing with me, choosing me. And yeah, we uh, played through relegations. We made it, and that is how I joined SPL. That team, uh, I think, is one of the more underrated NA teams uh, in in recent memory. I guess it's not that recent anymore, but that that team had so you guys were were popping off a little bit. You guys played really well for for a pretty long stretch. Yeah, I think uh, I think we had like as a team. I think we did play pretty well. Like that summer split. Um, before Yannick left was like we were tied for first which I don't think people really realize but um I think we played well at Valencia as well like I think we probably should have won if Morgan didn't have perma stealth but um also that summer split Snoopy Snoopy had like one of the most dominant summer split performances of like in SPL history like he played so well that split which I feel like yeah. never gets talked about either like he was by far the best ADC in my opinion that split he would just play yeah, flashbound AMC every game I think that that's like yeah, Frostbound AMC, dude. That was something else. I feel like that does get lost is like everyone thinks of Ionic Snoopy in particular as these like season one superstars, but but that split in particular the, was very successful for them. And for you and for Heroind, uh, Kiki was a part of that team at Valencia, if I remember properly. He was your solo yeah, laner we, then, Walrus yeah, and Yeah, we got Kiki in Summer Split, yeah. Yeah, Kiki also played so well that split. Mm -hmm. Like, I, obviously, we all played really well, but yeah, I think that it actually is a pretty underrated team. I'd agree with that. I remember picking you guys to win Valencia, and uh, everyone thought I was crazy. And then I got upset for you whenever Yamin like Morrigan all over you guys uh, at that LAN. Dude, Morgan was so broke. I can't believe we left that character open. That that was also the split. Morgan was eighteen and zero, and then we were the first well, team to lose with it. Actually, no so way. Morgan she was, was eighteen and zero in SBL. Eighteen and zero in SBL, and people didn't like. I feel like people didn't realize how broken that character was. Like people in EU played it, but we were really the only NA team playing it at the time. But she yeah. was eighteen and zero in SBL. Is that good? I think that might be good. I think. Yeah. I think Perma, that might be good. Stealth might be pretty good on a character. <laughs> turns out that uh, that that turns out to be the case. You're not any stranger, by the way, to insane SPL streaks. One of your claims to fame was the the Naja. What was it? Is it? It was it in the twenties? Seventeen and zero. Seventeen and zero. Okay, very but close. Seventeen and zero through right. Summer Split season five through Worlds. I was seventeen and zero. Yeah, so maybe I get a little bit ahead of myself. I do want to rewind a little bit to how you get onto that splice team. What happened after that Valencia land, um, and then how did you end up going on splice uh, in, in the next year? Well, at Valencia, we lost pretty heartbreakingly, in my opinion. Um, but then Ionic let us know that he was he didn't want to play again, that he was going to retire. So, like at Valencia, like he told us when we were in the hotel. So we were trying to figure out what we were going to do. Um, we decided on Aurora. We picked up Aurora. We were pretty confident in playing with Aurora. Um, and then things just didn't work out. I, I, I don't think the meta was – the meta changed, not in our favor, in my opinion. Um, obviously, we weren't the same team. Like, yeah, I think Yannick was a big part of just, like, just like being a leader and keeping the team together and stuff like that. Um, we didn't do as well. I think we finished fourth. And then we got, like, scrimlocked. Just a lot of stuff happened before that land. Then we lost at the land. And then everyone just kind of decided, like, yeah, I think we're all just going to go our separate ways. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. I personally wanted to play with, like, Ionic and Heroin again, but they decided to go with, uh, the they decided to play with uh, Jigs and Homie because they were, like, a combo back in the day. So I was not on a team. Um, I asked a lot of people. I didn't get an opportunity. So I just said, oh, I'll just play SEC or whatever what it was called at the time. I played on an SEC team with Solar Troll. And we ended up scrimming Splice a lot, which at the time, which had UG. And I was playing really well, in my opinion. Um, nice. And then stuff happened with UG. I don't think they were yeah, performing like they wanted to. Them. And then Best messaged me, actually, and asked if I wanted to try out for that team. And, yeah, again, I tried out. I think I played pretty well, and then I got on that team. Yeah, and that team ultimately wins Worlds. But I think people might forget how much you guys struggled at the very beginning of that season, how how difficult was it for you uh, to to go through? You know, you're back in the SPL. You you weren't sure if you're going to make it make a roster, and then that spring split in particular was really really rough. I don't know if you guys won more than a single set. Yeah, it was definitely a rough split. We ended up winning one set, but um, yeah, people were getting really frustrated. I mean, it was most it was really frustrating because we would win. We like we brought all those games to game threes, like. Yep. Like, we knew we were good enough to win, but we just, like, would not perform in game threes, which was, like, the really frustrating part. Um, 
honestly, like at the end of game three, everybody was super frustrated. Yeah. I didn't know if there was gonna be roster changes. I got a but uh crazy. yeah, I mean the Kabam just said like yo, like I have this house we can all stay at. I really think we should just go there. I think we can improve a lot and the rest is kind of history, you know. Yeah, summer split. You guys turn it around at the beach house. You guys finished third. You just barely miss making top two, which was the cutoff at that point. So you don't miss. So you just barely miss going to land. And then fall split. You guys go back to to your respective houses. You know you aren't all grouped up anymore, but you continue to just like absolutely dominate. Do, I, I don't know how to explain it, man. What what happened in the house? Did it just bring you guys together. Really like made all your synergy better or what yeah i just think it was a combination of just living together getting better synergy and then we also had really low ping like we had yeah. probably in the history of smite i think we had probably the worst ping situation out of any team in spl mm. cyclone was living in california i think uh divios was living in yeah, yeah, western so. canada and i was living yep. in colorado the colorado's not bad but it's still i was getting like 80 ping sure. divios was 120 and cyclone was 120. So I just think it was a combination tough. of uh, just getting better synergy and then actually getting confidence with like having lower ping and knowing we can play this well. I think it was just like a combination of all that stuff. And you pick up Moswall, who uh, ended up being a, a huge piece for you guys, of course. Going into that world championship, did, how, how confident were you that you were going to win? Um, well, it's actually pretty funny because leading up to scrim, we boot camped before that world and leading up yep. to scrims, we scrimmed yeah. United like a ton because they were the only NA team at the time that made worlds mm -hmm. I, or like, well, SK made it or trifecta made it, but they were playing in the qualifier or whatever. So we could really only yep. scrim United and we lost probably 80% of those scrims. It felt like, um, which it actually ended up being good. Cause like losing those scrims made us like figure out Geb and a Wheelix and those picks that we played, but um, I, I was really confident against the EU teams, personally. Like, I, I knew we were going to do pretty well against Obey and, and uh, Dignitas, but I didn't know how well we were going to do against, like, United, for example, if we met them in finals, but... Hey, Trifecta took care of those guys for you, right? They, you didn't, you yeah, didn't have to worry too much about out, that. So. <laughs> yeah. what, uh, okay, so now I do want to talk about the Naja. 17-0 from the middle of that into and through Worlds. Uh, how that must have just been an insane amount of confidence that you had any time that that got let through picks and bands that, that you were going to be able to win those games and particularly in the finals where they decide to not ban that naja multiple times in the in the in the total finals were you surprised at all that you got it during that that final set i was really surprised personally because i think i played really well against the obey set both games i was like top damage both games and then dignitas banned it every single game and round two so i just figured i'm never gonna play it for this we talked about it i'm like i'm not gonna get nasia again i have these other picks though i'm pretty confident in and then they left it open like i i i don't know how to explain it like i've, I've never felt this way ever again but it's literally just like every single time i picked that character i just knew we were gonna win like no matter how the early game went no matter how the game went i just knew we were gonna win you were right you were absolutely right yeah no reason to feel any other way you guys win worlds you decide, you get MVP. What was that like to to be announced as the most valuable player? Uh, it definitely felt good, but like everyone on the team played, I, I felt a little undeserving in my opinion because I don't think I played like as good as I could have in the final set. But um, everyone on my team played insanely well. Obviously, like you could argue, literally anyone on the team deserved MVP. But to get that honor, it definitely felt good to get, be like recognized for my play. Listen, man, you, everyone's got to play well in order to win a world championship, right? But uh, I think the 17-0 Naja did factor into the voting maybe just a little bit for that MVP. But then the next year, season six, it gets a little bit uh, a little bit tougher for you. You go to SSG after leaving Splice, uh, and, and then you guys struggle on that SSG. That must have been a very difficult time in your career to go from, at the very pinnacle, reigning MVP to leaving that team to SSG where you guys uh, really floundered quite a bit in the second half of that year. Talk me through season six and, and what that was like for you personally. I mean, it was definitely a rough season. Um, frustrating, disappointing, a lot of other adjectives. Um, we'll see but that, yeah, I don't know. To go from like end of season five, everybody was saying like, oh, I might be the best jungler in the world. To so having that season six split where people are saying I shouldn't even be an SPL is yeah, like really weird experience right mm -hmm. um 
I just I just think it's something that doesn't get talked about enough, like in SPL and any like pro league, right? Like there's people who, like I don't like, and when you look at Reddit and you just see people and they're like, oh, that he shouldn't even I be in SPL. Like I hate watching him. It's like definitely affects you, right? I feel like that doesn't get sure. talked about enough. But um, yeah, it was just a really disappointing season for me personally. I don't think I played great. I think SSG just as a team though had some problems yeah. that I thought I could fix going into it, but I was not the person to fix those problems in my opinion. I do think everyone on SSG, though, was, like, a really good player, in my opinion. Like, mm -hmm. I think Andy was really good. I thought Aqua was a really good solo laner. Obviously, Bear is a good player. And I think Jeff is, like, obviously, he was a good support. I just, I don't know. I still don't know what our issues were, to be honest. We tried so many different things. Like, we tried so many different things in scrims. Scrims went well. And then every single SPL set, we would just lose, so. A little, little bit brutal. A, yeah, it was definitely a brutal year, for sure. Well, it's certainly uh, looking to to turn around here in this year with with season seven and obey. But I but before we move on to that, I want to ask. I remember to be in the inter, in an interview at the beginning of season six. I think it was you said that you didn't mind being the bad guy. Like you didn't mind having that that kind of public perception uh, because you know you're a confident dude. Sometimes people don't really like that. How do you think your mentality has changed in in the way that you want to be viewed as a player? Yeah, end of season five, my confidence was definitely at an all-time high. Um, okay. I like I, I, when I retire, I just want to be known as like a person who was like a good teammate and like a good player. I, I definitely at that point in my career, I don't think I was a great teammate. I think I was pretty rough for team environments at certain points. Um, so this year, I've really just tried to just be like a good teammate, just like bring my teammates up a lot, and yeah, I've just just tried to change my mentality a lot this season. How do you think that that's going? Do you think that affects your play at all to to not be that that you know confident leader or in trying? To, are you trying to take more of a back seat or do you think that you can fill both roles still? Um, I think I can fill both roles, but this season I definitely have been. Um, I've I've tried to like bring my teammates up like like pretty famously. I, I would just tell Moswell to stay in mid and don't take my farm. Yeah, yeah. Which and now I let Wolfie just take all the farm he wants, which is a pretty big change for me personally. But uh, yeah, I like and like at certain points in my career, I thought I was the one who had to carry. Like if I didn't play well, I was not going to win. Um, but this season, I, I like I know like Wolfie, like every one of my teammates can win the game for me. I just need yeah, to like get some to that point. Is my mindset. Well, hopefully uh, that'll happen, and we'll keep seeing some Obey wins, and maybe equally as importantly. The Nuggets will continue their fantastic playoff run in the bubble. Sino, thanks so much for the time, man, and uh, go Nuggets.